morning, Light and Life kids. We're so excited to worship with you this morning. Would you stand up and get ready to worship with us with words, with music, and with motions? Wrestling in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, in the silence, you won't let go. In the questions, your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I hope you guys ate a lot of food, turkey, mashed potato and gravy, uh, cornbread, pumpkin pie, pecan pie. I had ice cream and cookies uh, for dessert. So man, it was a great Thanksgiving for me and my family. Um, really quick, uh, I just want to share what I'm thankful for. So I'm thankful for, of course, you guys. I'm thankful for Korean barbecue, you guys already know. I'm super thankful for, what am I super thankful for? My family and my friends. I'm super thankful for comic books, 
I'm thankful for Spider-Man. I'm thankful for the Lakers. I'm thankful for this awesome church, Light and Life. I'm thankful for, hopefully soon, I'll be thankful that Miss Sarah will allow Aslan and Mr. Carlos um, to help me out in TNT in Awana. Um, you know, Sarah, thank you in advance. Uh, hopefully it'll happen soon. But guys, just because Thanksgiving is one day out of the year, right? The last Thursday of November does not mean that we are done being thankful for all of the great, cool, fun stuff in our lives. Because God wants us to be thankful every day. And I have the perfect story to tell you guys. Many of you have heard this before, but just in case you haven't, this is a wonderful story. It's a story where Jesus does a miracle. And it's, it's, it's pretty amazing how it happens, all right? So if you guys want to grab your Bibles, you guys can, or you can just sit there and hang out and just listen to me tell this story. And I'm going to tell this story in a little bit, but we got to pray first. So let's bow our heads, let's close our eyes. I'm going to say a super short prayer. Here we go. Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for everything. Thank you for creating the world. Thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. Thank you, God, that you love us so much and you take care of us. Thank you for our families. Thank you for our friends. Thank you for all of the blessings that we have in life. God, I pray that right now you remind us to always be thankful and that uh, you would remind us of the main importance of this lesson, to always be thankful to you. So God, teach us, uh, tell us what you want us to know so that we can live thankful lives. In Jesus' name, and everybody said really loud, amen. All right, here we go. So here's the story. One day, Jesus was traveling down the road, walking to Jerusalem. Jesus liked to travel all over the place to tell other people about God, about heaven, about all the good things that they should do, right? How to love others, how to treat others, right? And Jesus was walking on the way back to Jerusalem. And he was walking down the road right before he was going to step foot in the town. He saw these 10 people. And they had a very serious condition called leprosy. Now, leprosy is an illness. It's caused by an infection that causes your skin to get really red. And it causes your nerves in your body um, to get all messed up. So you're going to have weakness. You're going to feel uh, numbness and tingling. This disease was very contagious, which means that if you were with other people who had leprosy, you were going to get leprosy too. And this disease spread when people would cough or sneeze. Kind of similar to another disease, but, you know, the YouTube algorithm will slam this video, so I can't tell you the name of that particular disease, but... It was a very bad disease also. Well, the problem was that those people who had leprosy, they couldn't be around other people. They couldn't live with their families. They couldn't go to work. They couldn't go to school. They couldn't go to church. They could not be around other people. So what the people would do was they would kick them out of the city. And all of the people who were, who were lepers, who had leprosy, had to live outside of the city. They couldn't go into the city. They couldn't be around other people or else everyone else would get sick. Now, these 10 lepers were hanging out outside the city and they saw Jesus. And they knew who Jesus was. They heard about how loving, how kind, how nice, how good he was to people. And they knew that Jesus could perform miracles. And they knew that Jesus can cure them from this illness. 
So they cried out to Jesus from the side of the road, Jesus, Jesus over here, help us out. Please help us. We don't want to be sick anymore. Please help us do something. And Jesus saw them and Jesus told them, go and see the priest. Go to the church and see the pastor. Well, the 10 men listened to Jesus. And as they turned around and started walking into the town, suddenly they started to get healed. The redness of their skin returned to normal. They now had feeling in their fingers and in their hands. They weren't sick anymore. Now, before I tell you the rest of the story, I have to talk about why Jesus told them to go see the priest, right? Wouldn't you think that Jesus would pray over them and all of a sudden they'd be healed? Or Jesus would touch them and their disease would be gone? Why would Jesus tell them to go see the priest, like right away? He didn't pray. He didn't say anything else. He didn't do anything else, right? Because back then, if you had leprosy, the only way that you would be considered healthy or not sick anymore was if the priest or the pastor at the church would see you and then declare or say that, you no longer have leprosy. You are healed. You are perfectly fine. You can be with other people as well. So as these 10 people walked into the city, their leprosy vanished. It disappeared. It was gone. Jesus performed a miracle. But here's the interesting part of this story. Normally, when someone does something good for you, like, you know, they give you some food or they give you candy or they let you borrow a toy so you can play with, you normally say thank you, right? Well, out of those 10 people who Jesus healed, only one of them came back. As he was walking, he realized, oh my goodness, my skin is back to normal. I'm, I'm healed. I'm, I'm fine. I'm not sick anymore. He ran right back to Jesus and said, thank you. Because he, he was so, so happy that he was well. He can go back to town. He can live with his family. He can see his friends again. He was so excited. But he remembered to run back to Jesus and say, thank you. And Jesus saw the man come back. The man ran up to Jesus and said, Jesus, thank you so much. And Jesus kind of was a little, well, it was a little, he was feeling a certain way. Let's put it that way. Because normally the other nine were supposed to come back and Jesus was like, well, you're the only one who came back. And Jesus not only healed this man of leprosy, but he forgave him of his sins. Pretty cool. I mean, this guy was just expecting to get healed from his sickness. And Jesus did that. And on top of it, Jesus said, I'm going to forgive your sins. Everything that you ever did wrong is washed away. You are not only clean physically, but you are clean spiritually. That's an awesome miracle. So boys and girls, as I end this story, I want you to always have that, that desire to be thankful for, you know, for everything that you have. Because all of those things that you have, your toys, your video games, uh, your iPad, your laptop, um, your bike, uh, your PlayStation 5, or your Xbox series, 
um, your Nintendo Switch and all the cool stuff that you guys have, right? Those were the things that your parents gave you or your friends gave you. And, and many of those things are what God has given you, right? The food on the table, the house that you live in, right? All the friends that you have. Those are things that were given to you. So boys and girls, don't ever, ever forget to say thank you. Because being thankful, being grateful for things, it's what, it's what God wants us to do. All right? So, boys and girls, thank you so much for hanging out with me today for this super cool story. Um, let's say thank you, God, for this wonderful story that we learned about today and how to be thankful. Um, I'll see you guys next time. Uh, stay safe. Um, enjoy those Thanksgiving leftovers. Um, invite me to your next Thanksgiving party next year. And we will see you guys next time. Really quick, um, since we are moving into December, we do have a couple of really cool of Christmas events um, happening. So we do have flyers here at the church. So make sure you or your parents pick it up because those have the dates and times for all the services. We're also doing a, I think it's a 28 day Advent um, on our Light and Life app. So, um, you know, it's a great way, boys and girls, for you to prepare for Christmas because Christmas is a lot more than just Santa, cookies, presents, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, the Grinch, Frosty the Snowman and candy canes, right? It's about Jesus. It's about the birth of Jesus and him coming down from heaven to hang out with us because he loves us so much. And I'm super thankful for that. So don't forget to, um, uh, to figure out when those special events are. We do have some stuff planned for the kids as well. Miss Sarah will let you know um, this Sunday or the next Sunday. It's gonna be amazing. But until then, I'll see you guys later. Um, have a good one. Peace.